This is Massive Wiki Wednesday for January 31st, 2024. Um, and the idea today was uh, uh, Jordan and Jerry especially are attending for something called the Waggle Dance uh, Project, uh, which is, um, let me turn it around the right way for a Massive Wiki audience. The um, uh, Lionsburg and, and OGM together uh, ended up with some uh, funds that they're thinking about granting out um, and uh, Massive Wiki would like to apply for some of those funds. So there you go. <clears throat> We're talking uh, small, small thousands of dollars, uh, which is uh, huge and not too huge and it's right, just right. So the idea was, and Jordan and I talked a little bit already um, separately uh, in, so we came up with a, a, a silly name for the, and silly and not a silly name for the, the project of just having Massive Wiki, you know, uh, set up some proposals for grant monies, uh, and that project's called Waggle Dance. So um, if I share the hack and DM, Kind of working on while I'm mm. just, or not working on while I'm talking, uh, then more people can work on the hack and do. Um, do, do, you, um, do you mind if I provide another minute of context for that? Would be lovely, please. Yeah. Bentley and Bill and Valencia. Um, um, on behalf of Lionsburg, we set up. Um, some legal infrastructure that allows for fiscal sponsorships of valuable projects in service of designing and building a better world. And uh, Jerry and Open Global Mind obtained a grant uh, that we fiscally sponsored. And that grant was focused on publishing um, in name in the form of podcasts, but we were really focused on the kind of the back end infrastructure of publishing in terms of how that gets voices out via podcasting, but also maybe written materials out. And so those are being supported by the, the back end of Massive Wiki to, to some extent. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Jerry and I talked last week about how we could use the last few thousand dollars of those grants to kind of develop um, something high leverage that would advance our, our mutual missions. Um, so that's kind of what we're coming in. And Jerry and Pete and others have been working on a concept called NeoBooks um, that would also leverage massive Wiki backend. I've been working on a concept I call Lionsburg Wiki Books, um, leveraging the massive Wiki backend. And then I've also been publishing um, and prototyping Above the Chaos, which is a blog and a podcast that leverages massive Wiki for the backend. And so, so what we kind of have the opportunity, I think, with this six thousand dollars is is advance our backend infrastructure that's supporting potentially podcasting and maybe the publishing of neo books, as Jerry calls them, um, et cetera. So that's kind of what we're trying to hit here: is the highest leverage way we can use a few thousand dollars to advance the critical path in a way that that uh, furthers all these shared missions. Does that feel fair, Jerry? Um. Yes. Pete, did you want to interject something? Because I wanted to add a little something as well. Uh, uh, no, that's great. This goes back to conversations we had before in Free Jerry's Bay and other places about tiles. I'm just sort of folding that notion in here where tiles were small software projects that would uh, advance somebody's mission and a triple word score tile would be one that would serve multiple projects nicely. And so the, the waggle dance conversation we ended up having while we sort of named at Waggle Dance is that kind of what we're talking about is some way for different people from different communities to come together, do a Waggle Dance that says, I need this, I need that, and then figure out where are the where are the big wins and try to fund those early. And then we had the beginnings of the conversation about what those different tiles might be. Beautiful. Uh, Flancian is an, actually Flancian and Jordan are both awesome note takers on HackMD. Um, FYI. I was just going to ask who was doing this amazing work. So uh, Flancy and cheers. We, we could be deadly together. Deadly together. Uh, you're muted. Uh, you're muted. Clancy. You're, muted Clancy. We're not hearing, you're not hearing you. Uh, uh, and uses, Flancy uses an open, an open version, source version. Uh, so now so somebody's, now somebody's echoing. echoing. I think we've. Um, I think. Um, I think the thing I said. Thing I said about the piercing of meta worlds has just like succeeded. <laughs> Turn into the audio. Yeah. 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 
Um, um, Plenty News Plenty is an open, is an open version, of, version of Hackam uh, Hack and Pitch, Pitch, Pitch Doc <laughs> and uh, Anagora. I wonder if it's if it's Plantin's audio. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 You're like you're like the singular guy. I essentially or T-Mobile. As usual, like uh, I I feel like Icarus, uh, the, you know, flying too close. Uh, to some because like I, I was like I switched to Bluetooth and then that pipe wire exploded essentially, uh, or my setup. Uh, uh, but yes, I, I am an uh, open source. I, I was gonna say though, uh, I was I'm an open source proponent, but like a uh, hackmd, it sounds it looks really cool actually. I like some of the features it has over Hedgehog already. And yes, happy to uh, take notes. Let me know if you want, want me to take uh, action items or anything. Uh, what Flancy didn't say is that he also has a project called the Agora, which is a note-taking, backlinking, uh, elaborate system that fits very nicely into all of our conversations. Thank you. Yes, it's very similar, I think, in the same space as Massive Wiki, as uh, we have been discussing, and, you know, it has to do with like, trying to compose in different contexts. So um, I'm also trying to think about like uh, it as a potential like infrastructure base for neo books or similar things to the ones uh, you mentioned, Jordan. So I'm super interested in like uh, taking a look at, uh, at your work. Yeah, and uh, yeah, potentially collaborate. Yes, it's also Python based. I think, uh, wait, Mas uh, Massive Wiki? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, no, it's TypeScript? Yeah, or? we do Python, yeah. We do Python, okay. No. <clears throat> Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> so yeah, um, massive wiki and, and Agora need to get together more. Um, let me kind of dive into why call dance, and I apologize. I'm going to have to leave in 15 minutes. Uh, so um, uh, let me share my screen, and and you can do this on your screen too. But um, let's look at the Weigel dance uh, notes. And I think what I'm going to do here is. Um, uh, uh, kind of go over this really quickly and try to give a, a flavor of uh, what we were thinking at the time. Um, and I probably won't go into lots of details. So one of the things I did uh, for each kind of, you know, we, we, this is an unorganized wish list of brainstorming ideas, basically. So it's not organized yet, um, not sorted, not, uh, not even scaled the same size and all that kind of stuff. But uh, as we went through uh, ideas and wish list stuff, I, I tried to kind of scope each thing uh, so we get a feel for, you know, this is a small thing and easy to do and we should just do it. And this is a big thing, even if it's really nice, maybe, maybe we can't afford it, I don't know. Um, uh, wow. Um, I guess uh, GPTs for massive wikis would be useful in the NeoBooks context because in the NeoBooks context, I've got an assertion that GPTs are going to be a, a primary way people interact with content uh, rather than books and rather than uh, websites. Um, uh, and I'm interested in that, but it's not super important for massive wiki. Um, some ways of making Massive Wiki more of a wiki, starting with just um, an edit this page button that brings you to the, the GitHub interface would, would be a start. Um, but then that gets fancier and fancier and, and then goes on to, um, I think this goes on to uh, the Opal and uh, Opal and the other one um, kind of thing. So. Themes for Massive Wiki. Zirconium? Uh, Zircon? Yeah, Zir Zircon, yeah. Um, themes for Massive Wiki. Massive Wiki, does, uh, the builder, has a pretty decent theme system. And uh, we just haven't built many themes yet. So it'd be fun to spend some money from somebody uh, to build some more, more themes. Um, and I guess a couple things there. It would be nice to have some different looks. Um, somebody, uh, uh, our friend, Gil Friend, actually, uh, was talking about, uh, we, uh, uh, Gil is, um, uh, Gil is in the process of kind of neo books and kind of, uh, other stuff. And he's, he's actually based in Obsidian. Um, and, uh, we were doing a compare, a comparison of, um, Obsidian Publish and, uh, and massive wiki 
he liked the font actually i think the font does look a little bit nicer in obsidian publish um we also kind of oohed and odd over this uh this thing um the massive wiki sidebar is actually a page in the wiki and uh, if you've used it you know there's some weird stuff that we do with that um so i don't know that this is what we should do the the fold out stuff i like that that the sidebar is a is a wiki page but it causes some problems and then different themes can do different things to make sidebars or not um anyway sorry to get in on themes a little bit um uh we liked i i don't know i we i feel like we this makes sense like i remember talking about this but it's hard for me to imagine what a great beyond themes thing would be because you can do a lot with a theme uh, I think but anyway is, the idea is jordan's jordan's direction i don't know if jordan wants to expand on it I'm, I'm satisfied with i'm satisfied with themes for now we can skip this one um we we put any two check in here because it was one of the, the mm -hmm. websites that we could think of that looked different and cool um this is a whole big thing uh jordan in particular but everybody i think uh, bill and i have talked about this a little bit too it would be nice if uh, individual wikis worked better together um, so it might be nice and back in the olden days of wikis we did a little bit of this we had sister pages and interwiki linking and stuff like that um, so there's a lot of cool ideas in here um, and probably just to go through some ideas would would be a fairly big project um, but th there's a lot of wins in there um, especially so jordan's wiki is up to 1.3 million words um, and uh, it would be nice if it was all one thing and it would be nice if it was like if you could take each wiki book out um, and have it be a separate thing and part of the, the big thing so um uh that leads straight into discussions about uh and jay and i have a little bit of this discussion going back and forth um uh i have a i have a preference or i i don't mind too much when wiki pages get duplicated and and morph away from the original without even being able to follow back to a home base i mean that's not ideal but i'm also not not worried about that too much i don't but but anyway if you have a page you know if you have a interwiki interwiki system and one of the wikis is massive wiki you know the developer massive wiki and another one is lionsburg and another one is ogm and another one is maybe the agora um and there's a page about uh benjamin wharf um which is the right page that you go to um uh, this reminded me actually also of uh, Mark Antoine's work on hyper net, uh, hyper, was it hyper, hyper knowledge? I think it's hyper knowledge. knowledge. Um, uh, Mark Antoine has a lot of thinking around data structures and also um, data structures uh, for hyper knowledge where you have a claim and a counterclaim and a counter counterclaim and, you know, different ways of linking those things together kind of recursively. Uh, Jerry, I don't remember what this one was. Um, so we need metadata around nuggets, if we'll keep the words of, of nuggets right now. And the question is where to put the metadata, how to hide the metadata. Can we regularize the metadata so that it's easier to navigate? Uh, and metadata would be obviously who, who wrote this, when was it published, when was it updated? But other metadata is, hey, this nugget exists in second grade language over here, in Portuguese over here. Uh, hey, this there's a, been a video has used the contents of this nugget as its content, and that video lives over here, et cetera, et cetera. All of those things are, are part of the intertwingularity that we're busy kind of designing here. Thanks, Jay. And I think this this bullet basically means it would be nice if not only ways to manage metadata well, but if also standardized schemas. Yep. Yep. That's exactly it. Um, uh, and then we also have a list of tropes like cut, copy, paste. Um, in another, in another, if 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 it's not data and it's processes, then you're talking about a pattern. Um, so trope or pattern. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we have this down here. Um, I think we'll get back to that later, or maybe not. Um, so a writing book 
uh, writing dashboard, sorry. Uh, I think this is a Scrivener view of, uh, of a book on top of like Obsidian or, you know, your other, whatever other IDE you use. Um, this is something that I'm kind of thinking of, have been thinking of for a while. And this is an obvious thing for NeoBooks. Uh, it would be nice to have a button or a, process, a thing that you run or something that, that turns a massive wiki into, moves it towards an EPUB and, and a KDP, Kindle Desktop Publishing, Kindle Something Publishing. So um, that's not a lot different than pushing it to HTML. Um, kind of no more or no less hard. Uh, when you get into KDP, uh, if you're, especially if you're doing a, a book, a print on demand book, um, you might want to turn links into uh, like some kind of flat, you know, text, uh, text uh, footnote thing and have a bibliography or something like that. Um, this is a wish that Jerry's expressed really well because uh, Bioleaky Plex doesn't do this yet, but it would, and that's why we, this mentions Plex. Uh, the idea of this is that it would be nice. Uh, uh, Plex right now is implemented in Ghost and uh, each issue is one long blog post uh, with articles in it. And the articles aren't addressable and there aren't, you know, they aren't decomposable. So each article in a Plex um, issue should be a nugget. Uh, and then, you know, you should or be even able a to collect, or even a collection of nuggets, or a collection of nuggets, even better. Yep. Um, Jerry talked, I think, a little bit about. Sorry, Jordan talked a little bit about podcast infrastructure and massive wiki. Um, Jerry has talked before about um, uh, it would be nice to do presentation from a massive wiki, and the. The easy step for that is using one of the JavaScript presentation frameworks. There's a few of them, and they're pretty good. Um, fancier stuff like Prezi. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if we could reconstitute Prezi on top of Massive Wiki? Um, I probably added this. Wouldn't it be cool if you had a, a, chat, a chat bot? This is very, very much like the GPT thing, so maybe the same thing. Um, do you want to talk about this? Sorry. Yeah, this this is a very specific ask, and it's 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 probably way out on the horizon. But um, I think that a lot of us are busy designing system services, movements, projects that have multi layers to them. Here, you know, the, here's the layer of people involved. Here's the layer of project and project names. Here's the layer of infrastructure, uh, and then here's the layer of uh, markets that that might use it, et cetera, et cetera. And the multiplane mosaic borrows the multiplane camera idea from Disney and says. Why can't we actually create a graphic that that you can inspect this way, and then you can pull out a, a plane, a layer, and look at it in two D to make it better? And that might be a database call. It might be, you know, the map of communities from Pete's Mast might be a call into a database of organizations and how they're related to each other. That could be automated and then put back into this layered map. So it's kind of an involved, semi three D, two D visual representation project. So it's not it's not core. Uh, it's not, you know, key or core to any of the other projects. Um, in a way, Jerry, that sounds like a view or something, uh, a, a, a nugget. It's that's it, similar to nuggets. It's a viewer. It's it's similar to viewer Neodex, viewer. Neodex or Neobooks. Like it's a mushroom. <clears throat> yeah. Um, can, shall I explain um, mushrooms briefly? Although you've yes. got to go in a second. So I've been using mycelium as a metaphor for a lot of these activities and uh, nuggets and all that. And the neo books that I'm talking about and the neo deck that might be a presentation would be fruiting bodies that you could eat that do, that are that are uh, cultural artifacts people would understand. Uh, but the they grow out of this substrate of uh, active, live, connected nuggets that are. Uh, in community that are being edited, revised, improved, uh, connected, woven, all those kinds of things. Um, you probably know about Opal and Zircon kind of, and that's good enough for now. Uh, uh, Bill and Pete have kind of a list of things that you know have been top of mind. Um, Bill's doing uh, Yeoman's work on uh, making Massive Wiki Builder in the Python module rather than a, a Git sub module. Um, but that's wrapping up. 
so uh, a couple of things that have been top of mind for a while, uh, having a separate home page template, because right now every massive wiki page is the same. So it doesn't really have to be just a home page template, but you could have, you know, you should have different pages for here's a page with a hero image and a short text thing. Here's a, you know, a nice text page like, uh, uh, like most of our content pages are. Here's a, a page that you could use for a home page, whatever. Um, the, this theme that we're using uh, is called Basso, and it's got navigation problems, and that's probably good enough for now. Uh, Basso is also like super heavyweight. It's got a, a ton of Bulma junk in it um, for historical reasons. And I started working on uh, the next, a next theme, which looks the same more or less, but uh, isn't based on a framework. It's just using simple HTML and CSS stuff. Um, uh, it's not quite done. And I, I, it may need a rewrite to finish it. I don't know. Um, and then, of course, we've got a whole list of uh, wish list things, little and big wish list things, and the issues. Uh, so I think that's it. I wonder if I can get back to. I will stop my screen share. Um, cool. Jordan, thanks for bringing up uh, Lulu. Yeah, just a quick, quick, yeah. And I, I, if it's in the notes already, then I won't type it into notes. But if it's not, then I will. I don't think it's in notes already. Uh, mm -hmm. So I was doing some research. So I have a, I have an immediate challenge that could be related to this or not. But um, over the next, let's say, four weeks or so, I would love to compose some of the modular content in the Lionsburg Wiki into a printable book and get that out on. Kindle or Lulu as I was researching those options. Well, so if we use this as a case study, like, so Jerry, basically one thing we could do is we could pick one or two Neo books, quote unquote, and run them through a cycle. Cause so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that may or may not be a good idea, but sometimes if you have like a goal direction of a objective to obtain, then it kind of forces the, the thing along. And so I'd be happy to be a, a guinea pig on that and have immediately composable content to do that with. As I was looking at um, options, I was thinking, okay, and I'll, I'll give you one more piece of information. We have an elderly man in town here in Sandpoint who's like, I'm really interested in your work and I would love to read what you've written and I don't have computer, like I, I won't get on a computer. And so I was thinking, okay, well, I could try to compose like a PDF. And then I was like, well, Pete and Jerry and I are talking about composability, so maybe that would be better. Um, and so I was looking at, so, so then it's like, okay, I can put together a PDF and print it at Staples, A, right? I could um, do the Kindle direct to publishing and purchase a book for this gentleman, right? So I could just do that and then purchase a paper back copy and then hand it to him. As I was looking at that, I discovered that if you publish through KDP, you can't use any other ebook distribution. And so that led me to um, Lulu, which, which integrates with Barnes and Noble and Amazon and Ingram Spark and a few others. And it looked like um, better royalty splits without the restriction on only Amazon's ecosystem. So one thing that I'd be interested in is like, okay, over the next four to six weeks, uh, Jerry, maybe, maybe you have one and maybe I have one, but, but let's try to push a couple packages, you know, through this process and then actually build what we need to get it done. And that's kind of our proof of concept. Um, I, uh, let me talk about the, the technical part of that uh, a little bit. Um, and uh, I was recently part of a writing team. We have five, six or seven authors who put together a, a KDP paperback um, that's out now. Um, and I did my stuff in Typora, I think, which is you know similar, similar to uh, uh, Obsidian. Um, so when you get, when you, the, the funnel towards KDP, uh, kind of the, the stop before you get to KDP is, um, is Microsoft Word. Um, and then the stop before that is kind of Google Docs maybe. Um, so, uh, and then the stop before that can be Markdown. 
So I, I had the recent experience of getting from, you know, a, a set of markdown pages. Actually, I had it in Obsidian for a while too. Now that I think about it, um, uh, I did the, I did compose a bunch of pages into, into one type of document. Um, I think right now the state of the art, <laughs> I, I tried a diff bunch of different ways and the state of the art ended up being uh, Obsidian to Typora, Typora to copy, uh, actually export HTML without any styles, uh, load the HTML in Chrome, copy it as uh, HTML, paste it into Google Docs. <laughs> And then from there, uh, it, it, it left my hands and it went to the, um, the production assistant uh, who I think did Microsoft Word. But, and, and then the, the steps to, through that, uh, it was also interesting kind of participating with other authors having their own uh, tool sets. Um, part of that was simplifying my, uh, I had uh, like three levels of headers or something like that. And I simplified it down to one level of headers and uh, uppercase bolds. So there's some, you know, rectification you need to do to kind of fit it into a generalized, generalizable thing, um, which isn't hard, but it's, it's fiddly. It's very fiddly because it's like that step, you know, figuring out whether I could export an HTML and, and Im import that into Google Docs or paste it into Google Docs, all that kind of stuff right in there was a, a bunch of fiddling and you just fiddle around, right? So I, I think I just demoed that yesterday for Gil kind of again and flubbed it in a few places, but um, I've got it written down someplace and, and we can do that. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that first, the, the first attempts at that, I'm not sure that, that automating it is better than just doing it by hand. Literally the, you know, command A, you know, copy, you know, paste kind of thing. Um, and then once that rolls through a couple of times and you, and you notice, oh great, I have to go through and bold, you know, all the, all the upcase headers or upcase them or something like that. Once you kind of figure out what you want, then it's, it makes that, automating that a lot easier. And I think that's easier. It's easier to do it by hand a couple of times to make sure you know what you want and then automate rather than kind of fumbling around with automation and and trying to, anyway. So that's my theory. It's not that hard, but it's fiddly. That would, that would super well match kind of systems theory and continuous improvement of like, okay, let's thoroughly document what we have to do right now, you know, before we try to automate or improve. And then once we, once we create the process map, we can do the progressive improvement automation process. So yep. it makes sense, Pete. That's it. Exactly. I was going to say something very similar. <laughs> so thank you. Yes, I think starting with the process makes sense. Uh, I actually have uh, made some experience in essentially no, trying to normalize like Markdown in all the way to like Google Doc. I still have Google Doc uh, uh, using Pandoc. And yes, I essentially ended up as an MVP with a make file, uh, which is like, nice. you know, to some extent, it's like the simplest, it's not even like yeah. a batch, uh, right? It's not even a shell script. And, um, and I found, uh, and this, uh, I guess going back to the other uh, um, quick point, which is like, I've experimented with Pandoc, it seemed quite solid. And here I was thinking whether there could be some value also from the level of complexity of the task or making it more tractable, a point of view, to produce an intermediate representation to say, okay, so at some point it's gonna be a preprocessor step that produces, I don't know, like one HTML, one big file that has uh, all the, um, you know, uh, the, the, the render simple like um, a markup simple uh, being a whistleblower, I guess, but you know, like so, some markup in one and from there, uh, you know, produce a, a, a doc, a, a Google doc, etc. cetera. Uh, you know, you can imagine connectors that could all essentially assume that you start with this intermediate representation. Now, what the intermediate representation is, I'm not sure. Um, it could be concatenated markdown, for example, and, or, and fully expanded, you know, essentially macro expanded markdown. And this, I think there's actually, um, a markdown preprocessor um, that I use while well, well, put, put into here this um, proof of concept. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's a, it's a one package that came up when I was like, okay, what is the simplest preprocessing step on top of markdown? Yeah. So if you could describe, if, if the composition could be described in those terms, that could be a good target, for example. Do you have, do you have any of that tool, 
tooling stuff lying around, Fancy, yes. like that make file or? Uh, yes, I think it's, I link it now, it's all part of the, um, of the, of the Flancia project in the repo. I will link it and lower my hand. Um, Peter, I'm, I think you have to you have to depart, don't you? No, I'm sorry, I, I oh. miscommunication. I, I've got 27 minutes now. So. Oh heck, we can breathe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am sorry for the confusion. The execution. Um, the governor called. The execution 15, has yeah. been postponed. <laughs> um, right in Flancian's conversation, there's a uh, another format uh, that Sphinx uses, the, the native format for Sphinx, and I can't quite remember it, but it's it's a little bit like Markdown and a little bit a little bit fancier than Markdown. So maybe that's one of our intermediate things. Right, yes. Okay, uh, so I'll leave you there. Yeah, sorry. Uh, please, once again, go ahead. No, I was just quickly saying that it's Markdown PP, the one that uh, Markdown preprocessor, the one I mentioned, and I, mean, I, I, I link the make file. It's very cool. simple. Very simple. And the format I'm thinking of okay, is so structured text. I, I hope, uh, with with your permission, I might just uh, throw down a hypothesis of um, next steps for um, grant stuff. So it would be exciting to have a a finished piece technological artifact that helped this process, and and we've had a couple um, different viewpoints that have said maybe before we have a technical artifact that helps the process, we need to actually have a process um, that we can then continuously improve. So one hypothesis would be that we we take one or two Neo books and one or two podcasts, and we, we run them through the current process um, to see what we have to do. So um, I have live versions for both of those that we could do. But if a couple of us wanted to really pay attention to documenting the steps that it takes right now to go from you know, re recording something and then getting that um, for Bill and Flancian and Bentley. Um, I've been playing uh, with Pete and independently a little bit, but the the few test podcasts that I recorded for Above the Chaos, um, we came up with a template for Massive Wiki um, that's super manual. Um, but we we took the, you know, YouTube links and the, all the different podcast links. We put them onto a Massive Wiki page. We transcribed it. Um, so we have kind of an AI generated auto transcription that lets you then link the concepts and the transcript out to the associated wiki pages. And it's kind of a cool starting point, but just a rough template. But point being, we could take like one wiki cast and one wiki book and actually run them through from inception through composing and get it done and carefully document the whole process. And then that would basically become um, the artifact for any future Neo book or wiki book or wiki cast or anything that we wanted to do that that we would then start improving that that seems like that would be a really valuable step that we don't currently have visible um it's it's cool that Fonsin's here because it reminds me that the markdown world and whatever is bigger than massive wiki so the project that we're talking about here you know publishing uh going out to, I guess, book publishing from something like Massive Wiki, it would be really good to generalize that and make it, uh, you know, um, multi-markdown, you know, a, a markdown repo to, um, rather than saying it's a Massive Wiki thing, it's probably better to call that project markdown repo to, um, you know, to print or something like that and, and get yeah. other people to chime in because, um, flancian has got his, you know, contributions to that, which are not, you know, compatible with my massive wiki, but not massive wiki. And I think there would be a bunch of other people too. Um, yeah, I'm just going to add the, I'm going to advocate just one more time, just because I didn't hear it in, in your words, Pete. Mm -hmm. I think that the, to abstract out and generalize one more, it's like, um, markdown repo to print. And then there's also this, um, this voice component, which is like a audio file to broadcast. And, and so I think for those of us who have things to say over the next 12 months, figuring out how those both work, like how the podcasting or TED talking type thing works, and then how the writing and publishing things work and what those distribution channels are probably move in parallel. Another use case for that I have, um, 
uh, so you and I have talked about the podcast use case and close to that is also, uh, you know, a call like this, converting this transcript to print somehow or print or wikis or whatever. Another use case I have is an audio interview with somebody um, like uh, um, uh, kind of an anthropological interview with somebody, which isn't quite a podcast, um, has yeah. some similarities and some differences and moving that uh, yes you know from so i guess i guess what happens that maybe the difference is on a podcast you kind of like turn on the mics and you let it go and maybe you cut out here it's things here or there uh the anthropological interview process you want to collect more metadata around it and documents and pictures and stuff like that mm -hmm. and other videos um, yeah. and then there's maybe uh, for, for me at least um i did a little bit of this and did more editorial work on the the transcript so where somebody told the in the same part of the story in two parts of the thing i i actually you know moved the i, I put it together in the um, ed, lightly edited uh, interview right rather than just kind of leaving it all over the place in a podcast fancy yeah yeah uh, just to quickly point out um maybe a, a connection with, with like a hobby idea of mine which i never implemented or come close but that's seems related maybe which is um uh, related in particular to the notion of, of creating a podcast or like just uh, operating an audio composition uh, so uh, voice messages in chats this is something i discussed uh, yeah. at some points Essentially, like, you know, this pattern in which groups of people are just like have like even like group chats and send a voice message back and forth. That seems like a proto podcast, right? And could provide like a different interface that also shows, you know, um, uh, 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 that you can, you know, just uh, you just need to agree on a, meal, a, a platform for collaboration. And then the composability could be reused with like, you know, the primitives that Massive UK implement, for example. Yeah, that's really cool. To plus one that that's been a that's been a live theme, um, uh, so over the last sixty days, let's say, I've had numerous people communicate to me that when they receive a voice message from me, it feels really different than if I write something because of all because of the tone and context and all that stuff that it carries. And so I've had a couple of people say like, "Hey, would you be willing to record a ten minute um, voice message?" You know, talking about what's alive and and but yeah, what, what's going on? What can you see? What are you feeling? Whatever. But it carries a lot more information, obviously, than just textual. So that voice, uh, what is that? It's like um, voice monologue as opposed to like the interviewer podcast is more like voice dialogue, but it's like a proto monological transmission of more meaning than can go in text. That's really cool, Jordan. I have a, I'm reminded as we're talking about transcription, I'm reminded of another, um, another use case is not quite the right word, another transformation that I'm starting to realize I need. Um, Zoom is, is currently going, or it's going to make a beautiful summary of this call and it's going to be about 95% right. Um, right now what I'm doing, I, I'm, I'm, I have a series of calls that I'm doing where I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to copy and paste this into the, the, the wiki and I'm going to put a thing on the top of it that says AI generated may be inaccurate, you know, uh, consult the, so I don't, the process I don't have yet is some way for people to kind of iterative, iteratively improve that, that AI summary and then also keep them uh, keep separate versions of what that summary is because, uh, and keep them visible, I guess. So um, the thing I need is for people to say, hey, it misspelled these words and maybe maybe fix them, maybe not. Maybe just tell me that they need to be fixed. Um, you know, or it would be better if you reordered these sentences or something like that. So I need a, like the rough, um, the rush version of the transcript that's AI done, and then the uh, improving version of the transcript, and then maybe a well-composed uh, summary of of the whole call or something, where somebody's gone in and fixed the you know fixed the the way that the thing is organized. 
Um, and you kind of need those all at the same time if they're not already completely done, if that makes sense. So I'd love to have that somehow. I'm not sure exactly even what I'm asking for along with how to do it, but thoughts in? I, I think, uh, so plus one to that. Uh, and I think uh, it can be generalized. I think you you hit the nail on the head. I think it's a metaphor, one metaphor. Uh, this is the, the problem that must be solved for all media, probably in the age of AI generation. Uh, you know, uh, no matter what is being generated and consumed, I think the flag, you know, um, a human being or otherwise an entity which I believe is conscious, if you want to like uh, make it more broad, uh, has actually consumed this before or like processed this before and found meaning or found errors or, you know, found both in, in such a ratio. And in general, um, you could imagine, I think um, I, I was dreaming of a sort of like a universal labeling, like sort of um, maybe uh, interface where, you know, as you are as exposed to things, you know, maybe we are developing this notion of like, mm, this sounds like it's a mistake. Maybe it's, you know, uh, hallucinated. Maybe it's, right? And that bit of information, which is like, oh, a human found this weird. I think it's something that is very valuable. And I think we will ev evolve yeah. probably the mechanisms to actually gather that. Yeah. yeah. You're up, Bill. Um, yeah, so this is really interesting. The thing that, that my response to P2 thing is that it's like all of a sudden we want a lot of work now. I mean, a lot of work. We're already busy. This is even more work on top of just meeting like we are today and trying to like lay out a little territory and you know and you know from jordan's thing like you know let's plan up let's pick one thing and go there and make notes while we're doing it right so my concern is i i like the idea of just saying you know automated or ai generated here's the content and possibly in some situations right you would say and here's a place to add your comments about it You'd like to say something? Yeah, that's this thing in the meeting, but here's what they missed. And just leave that there. The idea that then later, we're gonna go back and take the AI generated and these commentaries and produce yet another artifact. It's like, what problem is being solved and whose problem is that? I mean, I just, I think we have to find a way to do less and get further along I was reminded when we were talking about metadata, I used to teach at a school of information and library science. And this came across my desk. It was like, metadata is a love letter written to the future. So basically when we keep talking about, oh, we're gonna add all this information. It's like, yes, and it has a purpose. That's why we're adding it, you know? And I still think because there's only 24 hours in a day the fewer things you put on the list, the better the chance you are of getting them done. I'll stop. But anyway, I think, I mean, I like it. And I think the idea about writing down what you're doing while you're doing it, I try and do this all the time. It takes time, but I'm trying to put in the time. So when I remember, why did I beat my head against, you know, building a Python module for like a day and a half? Oh, here's why I beat my head against it, you know, yeah. and I don't, don't want to do that again. <laughs> so anyway, so I, I appreciate that, you know, but I just think this is a thing we should write down, but I just don't believe we're going to get the completely alter, intertwingled, all connected, all good, nice world where we can see everything and everything. It's like, no, we're living in the world we're living in. You know, like when I want to find out something like, you know, which, you know, which website should I look at? I mean, I want to learn a thing. I got a library filled with, you know, 10,000 books. Which one of these should I look at? I, I you know, it's like, I, I don't pick one and start reading. I mean, that's a little facetious, but you know what I'm trying to say, I think. But I, um, I learned, 
I learned a really hard lesson in building companies that I think matches what you're saying, Bill, is, is so often we would, we would do all these little things or complicated things or whatever, but we wouldn't like document what we were doing and kind of build it stupidly and slowly from the ground up. And so as people come and go, or we forget or whatever, all of a sudden in a year, it's like, just like you're saying, like, why did we do that back then? And there's no record of it and you don't know why, and you're talking with different people. And so you're constantly reinventing the wheel. And so, you know, an 80 year old former NASA scientist was like, that's why you start slowly and document everything and then just slowly find ways to improve it, you know, a step at a time. So I, I think as a group, we kind of have a tendency to do that. Um, with 12 minutes left, uh, call it 10. Um, uh, I love where we've gotten to. And uh, I guess maybe the, the thing to do for another 10 minutes would be to talk about the process of kind of uh, sifting and sorting and, and um, summarizing a, a proposal list, a proposal of, of things that the massive wiki community could be working on um, uh, on the way to making that into uh, grant proposals. I So I know we got super excited there um, and I'm not sure that we did, but I would also love to have like one or two more themes that are simple and easy to read and also beautiful. And that's pretty cheap and easy to do. Um, and there's some just like dumb usability things probably in, in Massive Wiki Builder or the, the presentation of Massive Wiki um, or the input to Massive Wiki that would be pretty cheap and easy to do. So somehow we need to, you know, I'll take a lot of this on, but somehow we need to kind of come up with a short list of things that would be really good to work on and kind of rough estimates of what they cost and, and then bring um, that back. We've got a very nice list that you've curated, Pete. Um, we could put them on a spreadsheet. Each of us like vote in with some, you know, everybody assign 10 points or hundred points to whatever projects you think. We would require some thinking about the relative costs of these things, but that's a longer conversation after we have some priorities up and also maybe dependencies because some things probably need other things to show up first, uh, but we could do that as well. And I think we, we might very quickly discover that there's four things that seem to matter broadly to everybody. Uh, and then we can narrow those down given the, the cost of doing them or something like that. But yeah, um, I think we need thanks. to rationalize this list quickly. Thanks, Jerry. Um, I, I love that you, well, I love that you said that it was a nice list. I, we have a crap list right now from my, my point of view. Um, uh, the, the kind of, you know, I, I went through a better explanation of some of them uh, on this call. So I'll have to go back and find those. But um, I think we're about, two weeks away, two calendar weeks away from having a nice list that then I think it's totally right to, to do a, um, what a Dean 11 and I used to call um, planning game, uh, which is different than poker planning, but uh, planning poker. Um, but anyway. I heard two things here okay. that I think I really want to be started. Maybe one came from, one is about Jerry and the Neo books and going, you know, Neo Books, the publication, that's a thing. And Massive Wiki has sort of, you know, growing into this little first driver repository. But then, you know, for me, the Massive Wiki thing is all about the, the S and the V, the sharing and versioning. Um, and then the other thing that Jordan said, oh, we want an audio version of this. Like, how do we go from spoken words into like public, you know, kind of publication, which is, you know, everybody's doing it. <laughs> I mean, you know. You know, NBC's losing money trying to do it, but whatever. Um, I think those are two, and then maybe a third that has to do with maybe uh, the Angora, Agora, and the massive wiki con connectivity, something. But I would like to, you know, what are problems that we actually feel, you know, <laughs> are things that we want to see a solution to now? And we, so then we can generate the energy about, you know, you know, missing lunch to work on it or something, whatever. But I think yeah, uh, I, I love this. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. So, so that's my intuition too, is those are the three things that basically bubbled up for me. Um, so Pete said themes, and that's one of my triple word scores. Um, and it's pretty, it's pretty, 
it's pretty low hanging fruit that would improve the experience. And, and then the spoken to broadcast process and the text to publish process. So those are three immediate things that, um, and Jerry, just thinking about the intention of the grant, I think those that hits the intention of the grant really well. Um, the the um, spoken to broadcast coupled with the text to publish um, hits hits the intention of the the grant pretty well as well. What what are your um, top top two or three? So Jerry, I totally respect that we could kind of put together the list, weight it, all that. It I agree with Pete. It kind of feels like a a long slow process. So I'm wondering if you have a couple intuitive things that would stick out to you as the top two or three most valuable things um, that you can see from your perspective, Jerry. Um, I, thanks, Jordan. First, a question for Pete, which is what I think I heard you say about automating the process of publishing an EPUB or something like that. What I think I heard you say is that, hey, at the beginning, it's just going to be mostly manual. Let's not automate a thing. So there's no code to write right now. We just have to solve some problems to make our way over to an EPUB. Is that more or less correct? Uh, yes. Uh, meaning it's not a Kennedy project. Uh, yeah, I think it is. I, I still the, see that as very um maybe the automation of it is. I, I was, and I'm inspired by Flancian's make uh it, maybe Flancian's got it done already for us or you know at least the framework <laughs> maybe Flancian's made some progress towards it that we could uh leverage and contribute back to as we learn stuff uh, no I don't think so <laughs> you probably see it's very very simple uh, but I I do think that maybe uh, I, in my mind, defining, you know, for example, like a very simple flow, going back to the end-to-end -end flow that Jordan proposed, for example, take these end pages, nuggets, nodes, and, you know, put them all one after the other and create a, an EPUB or, 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 or a doc. That, I, th that I think it will let us find uh, the places where we can actually, like, you know, uh, convene and maybe like, you know, share tooling and also uh, uh, maybe just for now, simplify and do manually whatever is just like not worth the effort in prototyping. Um, let's wrap up. Uh, I will try to have a nice, I, I, I and I, maybe with Bill's help um, and maybe with some of y'all's help, um, I will try to have a nice, a nice list to do planning game against um, in two weeks. Um, and I think I I probably wouldn't do much. I, I think that's a good next step for um, Michael Dance. Separately, maybe some of us also want to start doing that publishing workflow stuff. And that's spread over, you know, Massive Wiki and Neobooks and Flancine's work. And we could probably find some other folks talking to Aram or something. Um, there's probably people who love to do that kind of stuff. Um, sound like a plan? I'm I'm willing to consent, but I, I don't see it as necessarily the wisest plan because I think we're we're stalling out for a couple of weeks on on work that could advance. Um, I think we intuitively kind of know the top things that we could advance. We have resources to apply them. So it feels to me like if you take two weeks to make a list, we're going to intuitively come to the same couple things. We'll take another couple of weeks to write a proposal. And then in a couple of months, we'll have very little done. Um, so that's why I was kind of asking Jerry, like, and, and I don't know, I, I would love to know just if our intuitions line up on the most valuable things we could tackle, we could also write a proposal in the next two weeks, start work or in the next two days, start working on it next week, you know, run a sample book through the process. And then in four weeks, we've like got something published instead of have priorities. Um, just to follow on to that, I think uh, themes or something like themes is an obvious triple word score for a bunch of us, including I think Massive Wiki proper before we ever showed up here, I think. Um, so that would be something yeah. we could agree on like now. Uh, the reason I asked Pete about, yeah. hey, uh, does the publishing path mean, is that a codable project or is that just, we need to manually go do this thing? The reason I asked that is that it would take if, if it's just manual labor, then we take it off the list of projects and it comes off as a as a priority for me. Um, but but yes, and, and Jordan, I wasn't thinking about podcasting at all when I came into this, but you're right that those are parallel paths. And I would like to be able to facilitate the podcasting thing so I could sort of meet you on that one, uh, because you've already gotten sort of halfway to having a, an interesting podcasting infrastructure between Whisper and the template you've got and a few other things that gets interesting very quickly. Go ahead, Pete. 
Um, Jordan, I hear you, and uh, I, I like what you say. Uh, I am concerned that we never discussed a few important things. Um, so that's that's why I would want to take some time. And I, I'm sorry that it's two calendar weeks that is my guess, um, uh, but swamped and et cetera, et cetera. I, so I'm not saying that we shouldn't work. I think we should work now on the publishing stuff. Um, uh, an example of something that we really didn't talk about very much, but I think is really important is commenting. Um, uh, how do how do people, you know, great, you've published your massive wiki or your obsidian vault or whatever it is uh, on the web and somebody has a typo, somebody has a question, somebody has a, a whole document they wanna contribute, how does that work? I think that's like really important um, and an example, just an example, one example of something that we didn't really talk about. So I, I think we haven't had enough discussion to kind of, I, I think there are a few more of those hanging out. Another one is metadata, you know, um, Massive Wiki Builder and Obsidian uh, converged on the same kind of metadata because it's, you know, semi-standard already, but I think we could do more with metadata. Um, Interwiki is also something that I would put right up there as, you know, we should at least maybe not um, commit to working on it right away, but at least start to draw some lines and start to talk to other communities like Fellowship of Link and, and um, uh, IndieWeb um, because they've already started thinking about different ways of doing that. So I still want to do uh, make it making a good list before deciding where to spend resources. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, Jordan. Cool. It is at the half. It is at the half. Great work, folks. Thank um, you. I'm going to drop a thing in about handwriting transcription. They have different names for the different kinds of transcriptions that you do that each have value. Um, I think something similar for voice uh, works. I think I'm going to copy that into the notes and it'll get somewhere, you know. I'm copying out of a, 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 my personal wiki page, actually. I, and so. when you've when you've posted the hack MD to some permanent URL, would you send me that? Yes. Or put it well, on. Put I it on will the, do that in, in the, the next channel. four hours or so. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you and all then, very and much. And then Pete, I know you. I know you have to bounce. Um, there's one voice we didn't hear from, which is Bentley. Um, Bentley, if you have anything <laughs> you'd like to add, I can stay for five minutes to hear anything you'd like to fold into the discussion. Um, Unless I'm just here to. But, yeah. No. Yeah. I'm just. Oh, here unless to Pete, oh, Pete. provide advice, but. Okay. I'm here on an as-needed basis, so I don't have anything to contribute. Thank you. Thank you though. Okay, um, great. Thank, thanks. Ben, Bentley might be somebody who helps us with some of the coding and work. Not, not that, I mean, he has his own projects and own interesting things to mm -hmm. say, but. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Beautiful. Cool. All right. Thanks all. Great. Thanks so much, guys. See you soon. Thank you. All right. Much Thank you. Have a nice one.